Welcome to Open Minds. I'm your host, Christopher Balkrin. And folks, just a few days ago, I mentioned that there's a new social movement afoot, and that's the Israel-Palestine War. But more specifically, this new social movement will understand the Israel-Palestine War through three dimensions, disclose, divest, and denounce the genocide in Gaza. Heavy focus on the denounce piece. And the reason why I believe strongly that this is the new social movement and this is how it's going to be understood is because of some very key reasons. Number one, there has been a deafening silence from our politicians, public leaders, corporations on this issue. That's number one. Number two, young people have never been more mobilized around a singular cause than this in a very long time, perhaps since maybe climate change. And number three, and also what's really important to all of this, there is a targeting, a targeting of public figures and others who have not come out and said anything, but not for critical thinking, but for denouncing the war in Gaza. And basically, because of those three factors, not only will this be a, a social movement, this will be how more and more people understand this otherwise complex initiative complex issue through these very specific lenses. Now, before I get into why I think that's the case and a little bit more, just remember, hit that subscribe button. Definitely leave a like or dislike if you're not liking my content. I'm trying to carve out a space here, which is quite unique in YouTube land, which is about exploring these topics through a critical lens. Now, I'm not always going to get it right. My analysis is not always going to be on point. But I'm hoping to bring forward questions that many of us have and leave you with some thought-provoking ideas as well. So definitely hit that like button, subscribe if you can, leave me a comment sec comment in the comment section below. Surprisingly, I read a lot of them, most all of them, even those that you know don't even like me, but that's okay. That's what the internet and social media is all about. Now, if you want a good example of silencing voices. Think about this for a second. There's a movement happening on social media called Blockout 2024. That's right. Social media blockout targets celebrities for not speaking out on the Gaza war. Social media users are calling on celebrities who have not spoken out about the ongoing war in Gaza and are blocking the stars in an attempt to undermine their revenue from brand partnerships. Now, you might be thinking, oh, Christopher, are these actually making a difference? Well, it turns out that Taylor Swift has lost 300,000, I think, Instagram followers who have blocked her and 50,000 TikTok users who have blocked her as well. Again, big difference between blocking versus unfollowing. And this was triggered after the Met Gala a few weeks ago, where people felt that there was this insensitive nature. These celebrities were attending these galas, $75,000 per ticket, by the way, and they weren't paying attention to this genocide that was happening in Gaza. So remember, the targeting of individuals for not speaking out on an issue through the lens that they understand that issue. Remember, this issue, this complex Israel-Palestine war is being understood through di disclose, divest, and denounce, and emphasis on the denounce. Now, you might be asking, why is Blockout 2024 gaining traction, and why is that last piece so important, the denounce? It's because our politicians and corporations and other public figures have been eerily silent on the Israel-Palestine war, and for good reason. This is a complex issue, and for years, even prior to October 7th, people really didn't talk about the Israel-Palestine conflict because it just always got heated and people would always be get, get very dug in on their, on their perspectives. But this is different. This is very different because it's not about critiquing, critically assessing what's happening in the region. This is about specifically understanding the conflict through the denouncing of genocide, which is a hotly debated term, in Gaza. 
Remember, this is not about addressing Hamas. This is not about addressing the charter in Hamas, which calls for the genocide of the Jews. It's not about that. It's not about women's rights in Gaza. It's not about LGBTQ rights in Gaza. It's not about any of that. By the way, I did not, re I did not realize this, but homosexuality is actually a criminal offense in Gaza, punishable up to 10 years in prison. Now, of course, that's a legacy policy from the British mandate in 1936, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of progressive policies that are missing in Gaza that are, cl are clearly not in scope uh, when understanding all of the issues that are, what, uh, are in existence when it comes to Israel and Palestine. So the targeting of public figures for not understanding this issue in a very specific way. The other piece to the narrowing of the scope and the deafening silence is the removal of critical thinking on this issue. And that's a key, key element of previous revolutions and social movements. Remember, the, the key messages have to be so specific and they can't be questioned because if they're questioned that there's no more unity, there's no more allyship, there's no more uh, a strong foundation to push for change. So removing that critical thinking sphere allows social movements to happen to this extreme, remember, understanding it through these lenses. Okay, so you might be asking, well, why is this all taking a foot? Remember who is actually doing this. It's mostly young people, and it's mostly university students who are, I would assume, uh, at the encampments. Although, of course, I don't know that to be true or not. Um, I truly believe there are other elements involved, but for the most part, it's young people. I think most people would agree with that. Well, what are some of the existential threats that are affecting young people in the Western world today? High inflation, high interest rates, lack of good paying jobs post-graduation, and high student debt. Those factors, some of which affect all of us, those last two only affect students. Uh, lack of well-paying jobs, post-graduation, and high levels of student debt. Think of what that does to students en masse, knowing that they've just spent four to five years of their life in university and they were guaranteed, maybe they were sold a dream of like a well paying job and a nice standard of living. Come to find out that well paying job isn't what it once was, and you can't even afford the cities that you studied in. And that's a real issue. Uh, Toronto rent now is around 20. 500 for a, a one bedroom and much more for a two bedroom um, and and wages have not increased alongside inflation. So what happens to that student body? I would surmise that more extremist ideas start entering the psyche when economic deliberalization, no sorry, economic what's that term? It's like economic uh sufficiency, self-sufficiency, whatever it is, I think you know what I mean, where that sense of future self isn't guaranteed, more extreme ideas start coming into the fray and start becoming legitimized. And we've seen this before uh, with the Bolshevik Revolution, the Cuban Revolution, where many people were feeling like, man, Batista left us out and we want to gravitate towards something that uh, brings us all in. Um, and there have been other movements as well where the downtrodden, dispossessed join these movements out of necessity than anything else. And I wonder if this is just a reality that we're facing. Silent political voices, tough economic times leading for young people to fill the gap when it comes to the Israel-Palestine war. And if successful, Disclosing investments, divesting from companies that are complicit in Israel's action in the West Bank and Gaza, and denouncing the genocide will, in fact, I've said this before, will, in fact, be part of the corporate social responsibility umbrella that uh, corporations will have to abide by. And I think this is all because of those few factors, the, the absence of more voices, 
the tough economic times for young people and the fact that there are uh, less and the fact that they're targeting uh, celebrities for not speaking out uh, on Gaza. Again, very interesting times, but more and more examples are kind of proving the point that this is a new social movement. There is a quote unquote even revolution that's happening in our understanding of this conflict. And I wouldn't be surprised if governments are pressured more and more to pressure the Israeli government, potentially, but also to, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, do we divest from companies that, aren't compl that are complicit? But what happens to Gaza? There's still a lot of unknowns, but I would say that this is, in fact, a social movement. There are more and more examples of it coming out. And also the language is getting more and more intense. So I hope that helps explain a little bit as to why young people are gravitating towards this. But a narrative is shifting. And folks, let me be very clear. This is going to be part of the corporate social responsibility umbrella in the future. Let me know what you think. And are you concerned about this framing of this topic and the war, it seems? on critical thinking. Let me know what you think in the comment section below.